It's rare in Star Wars that we get a look at something which shows a really direct connection or transition going all the way from the prequel era into the Empire and through the New Republic as well. So today I wanted to talk about one of those examples, Black Sword Command. Black Sword Command, or the Black Fleet, is a military unit which is the primary focus of the aptly named Black Fleet Crisis Trilogy, set 16 years after the Battle of Yavin where the former Imperial fleet had been taken over by the Yavitha, one of the various species in the area they were meant to oversee after the Battle of Endor. But what was Black Sword Command and where did it come from? The history of Black Sword Command stretches back to the Clone Wars, where the reinstitution of a standing, galactic-scale army beyond individual sector or system forces for the first time in a thousand years gave rise to the need to organize those forces. I plan to do a full video breaking down the entire system and its history and effects soon, so today we're just going to focus on the Black Sword Command itself. Through a series of new appointments, the Republic Army was ultimately split into 10 system armies as the highest level of organization under the Grand Army, and then below that, each system army was split into two sector armies, commanded by a military rank which later played a larger role on the political side of the Empire, the Moffs. Black Sword Command was the 6th Army, known as one of the Reserve Sector Armies stationed in the Corps. Black Sword was, of the 6, probably still the least important at the time, comprising what were known as the Negative Regions. It was far from any major Separatist front, and of all the Corps sectors, with its border on the Unknown Regions, it lacked the same importance of one of its neighbors, for example, Coruscant's all-important Azure Hammer Command. Black Sword Command was based on the planet Praxlis, introduced in the Black Fleet Crisis Trilogy itself in a throwaway line with little information. It was also commanded by Moff Veblen during the Clone Wars, who was introduced well before the prequel trilogy in the Black Fleet Crisis, and who was initially introduced only as the namesake of a ship in the captured Black Sword Command before being officially slated as the commander during the Clone Wars. Because of their lowered access to Separatist forces, both the Black Sword Command and another of its neighbors, Deep Core's 5th Shadow Hand Army, forces from both were often used to supplement the other 18 armies. As the Clone Wars ended and the Republic was organized into the Empire, many of these organizational units actually remained intact, including Black Sword Command. Considering the ship named after Moff Veblen, it was probably safe to assume that by the end of the Empire, Webland had either retired or died, and was replaced as the commander, though his direct replacement isn't named. Soon after Endor, the order was given to scuttle all ships which couldn't be evacuated from the sector and retreat towards the Deep Core, intending to join some of the Imperial forces which were massing at Bis, the new headquarters of the reborn Emperor Palpatine. This is when the Yavitha struck, capturing the ships which had been used to keep them enslaved for decades under Imperial rule. The Black Fleet Crisis Trilogy gives one of the best organizational outlines of Imperial forces in any book or even source book. so while presumably Black Sword Command remained somewhat unimportant and probably diminished even from its stature during the Clone Wars, there's a pretty good breakdown of how it was composed under the Empire, which could be somewhat indicative of how other forces worked elsewhere. In the Black Fleet Crisis Trilogy, the New Republic realizes they've been missing since at least Endor and provide a pretty full order of battle for the sector. This includes three super ships, the Intimidator and Executor class, and two other super ships with unknown Imperial designations, though one was renamed to the Aramadia and used by Yavithan Viceroy Nil Spar as his flagship after the Yavithans captured the fleet. There were additionally 41 other ships just among the captured, ranging from the Immobilizer 418 class to Imperial Star Destroyers and the EXF, a dreadnought used as a weapons testbed. For the named ships within Black Fleet Crisis, we get the Redoubtable, which is an ISD, and renamed to the Destiny of Yavitha, Victory Classes Valorous and Herodon, and then there's also an interdictor called the Imperator, which was also the name of one of the earliest Star Destroyers, so there does seem to be some reuse of names there. Most of these ships were renamed by the Yavitha, so even in the books, while you do get some extra names given for some of them, they're generally the names that were given by the Avethans rather than by the Imperials. The Avethans also seem to have made some direct copies of some of the ships they captured, increasing the amount of ships they'd have to work with, which they supplemented with some of their own thrust ship designs in their attempt to take over much of their neighboring territory before being stopped by the New Republic's Fifth Fleet in what was known as the Black Fleet Crisis. Beyond the ships themselves, the sector was home to at least 15 shipyards of the Type II Orbital Repair Yard variety. At least three of these shipyards had fallen into Yavithan hands within their own territory, and the New Republic, even after the resolution of the Black Fleet Crisis, 
was unable to find at least five of them. In addition to functioning as just repair yards, it seems like these would have had the capability of building additional ships as well, based on what the Yovitha were able to do with them. So while a lot of these, which seem to be kind of modular, deployable shipyards, wouldn't have been quite the same in how many ships they could build as a dedicated shipyard planet like Kuat, you do seem to have uh, capabilities under the Republic and the Empire to make at least some ships even away from major shipyards. Something which we do see backed up by other sources elsewhere. That's going to do it for our look at Black Sword Command. If you want to hear more about the Black Fleet Crisis specifically, myself and Eckhart Slatter recently finished covering the trilogy of books on our podcast, Tap Calf Transmissions, the video forms for which you can find on the channel here. For more information on the other sector armies, I do plan to do a longer form video about them and their transition from the Republic to the Empire. I'm also planning to do a longer form video on the Imperial Dissolution into the Warlords after Endor, so I'm going to try to do one regular video like this per week, and two to three shorts as well per week to allow me to have time to work on some of those longer ones. This week has been a pretty big week for planned streams for me with everything kind of coming up at once, so it's taken away a bit of the time that I'd otherwise want to be doing more lore videos with, so you can keep up with any of that if you're interested on my gaming channel Cory Loses. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.